Hi, I'm Anissa, and I'm very excited to just share with you all, whomever you may be, you know, especially if you're someone that is in a bit of an interesting predicament and perhaps have been uh, down and out and or maybe burnt out and um, you may find yourself needing a bit of a pick-me-up or simply uh, moral support you know to continue your walk um, your life and really to honor your breath in fact <laughs> what I'm here to share is uh, a few tips on how to better utilize this breath as a resource for healing, for liberation, and for peace. And for some that may look like focus, right? Um, I prefer those three terms because um, it's all inclusive and incredibly necessary during a time like this. So yeah, I'm excited. You know, I just wanted to bring you where I'm at. Uh, no performance, just keeping it real. Um, in my little corner, um, in my little space, to, yeah, to be honest. You know, that's what this is about, honesty. Because in many ways, in order to even really appreciate this breath and this life and this, the whole bigger thing, it's gonna take honesty and real deal courage. Because to be honest is a courageous act. And what better use to use that courage, right? Than to maintain your life and to even cultivate a life that is free of harm, free of illness, if, you know, possible and what typically comes up when, when used in this practice and in spaces that really highlight breath work is dis-ease right so disease is a big word that so many of us know but maybe um you may hear this from some buddhist or buddhist um and holistic practitioners that actually like to prefer that term as dis-ease which means how it sounds it's when the body the mind and the spirit is out of balance so no that was a lot and um trust me if you stick with me there'll be much more but in short, you know, to keep it cute and sweet, I'm just excited. I'm incredibly thankful because if you may be like how I mentioned in terms of, you know, seeking support and maybe down and out, maybe burnt out, I've been there. So I've been you. And um, it would be nice for me to be a bit of a mirror and to end that, like just... Uh, to keep it real and just share things that I've learned because I'm no expert I can't say you know that I know everything that would be a, a big fat lie but what I do know is um or rather what I've learned is how to get better at this and how to take advantage of this breath because that's it it's free <laughs> You don't have to pay to breathe. Hopefully, this remains the case forever, right? You don't have to pay to breathe. So, wouldn't it be even better to take advantage of the freeness of this, the naturalness of this, the innate right and capacity that this breath has to liberate you? So, if that interests you, then stick along because i'm i'm excited and 
prepared to take you on a bit of a journey. A journey of self-care, self-love, and healing. Okay, so the first thing I want to cover is the difference between meditation, mindfulness, and Buddhism. Now the reason I bring that up is because <laughs> in my experience as I've had the privilege to share this practice and really like offer my experiential wisdom and guidance um, in a teaching capacity to young children, young adults, as well as um, uh, adults of all ages. Forgive me, it's gonna be a little bit noisy. But I actually think that might be helpful because uh, after I explain you know, the differences between these three terms, another really great point to uh, understand is that this practice is something you can take with you anywhere. And oftentimes you can't really control your uh, external environment especially depending on who you are and where you come from and if there's cultural implications around it right so if there's a lot of noise screaming yelling commotion whatever listen i'm from new york i'm a native to new york when i came across this practice is actually when i was home you know when i was not in my physical home but when i was in my city which is pretty infamous for its noise and it was very convenient in fact to utilize the ability to focus on my breath and um, honor my well-being so yeah there's noise it's life but <laughs> if you stick with me if you allow me to share some of these resources that I've um, kind of developed you may too understand how to better work through noise discomfort and just unexpected environments and maintain an inner peace okay boom so back to what i want to get into i want to share you know these different terms because they're different but what i've seen like i was mentioning i've seen them sort of correlate and be cross-referenced um, in many cases i've seen especially while teaching young children but not just the young or those that are young um kind of make this like misconception or um misinterpret that uh once you meditate you know you're buddhist right or um meditation looks like one thing and it's like a monk right it's like the buddha and um though there may be truth to that it's not the truth and um these terms i actually like to understand as mutually inclusive so you might have heard mutually exclusive which um if you haven't is when things two things two separate things both exist um huh this is a little tricky mutually exclusive is what yeah it's when two things exist simultaneously but i guess like in an opposing way don't quote me on that not really here to define that what i'm meant to really focus on is that meditation mindfulness and buddhism are mutually inclusive meaning that these three terms can coexist and oftentimes do but they are inherently different so there's meditation which is its own thing there's mindfulness which is its own thing and there's buddhism which is its own thing Will they ever overlap? Definitely. You can be a Buddhist that meditates and grows in mindfulness, you see? Um, but you don't have to be. So, what are they, right? Like, what is meditation? Now, here's what I did. Because I figure this is what anyone would do. I Googled it. Because I'm like, you know what? It's such a heavy term. And most people, when I ask me this question, you know, they ask with that same level of heaviness. Um, and I figured, why not just Google it? Let's see what comes up. 
So in Google, when I searched it, I actually wrote this down. I like almost bust out, started laughing. That's because the Google definition, which is typically like sourced from like Merriam-Webster or one of those old dictionaries, is or says meditation is quite simply the act oh no it doesn't say that it said i wrote that but <laughs> it says that meditation is the act or practice of meditating what <laughs> like if you were to ask someone on the street or put it this way when i've been asked right or if you were to ask me what is meditation and you're like you know anisa i'm been stressed out i've been burnt out i just um you know i don't really know how to get it together and i just need some some help i need some support you know what do you recommend and i'm like well you should meditate and you ask like you know or you respond rather well I don't know. I don't know if I'm able to. I don't really know what meditation is. Um, sounds kind of hard. Like, what is it? Like, what is meditation? And what if I responded, right? With meditation <laughs> is the act of meditating. Right. You'll look at me like, Meh. what? <laughs> You'll probably run away. You'll probably be like um, offended even because you think like child i'm not here for no joke i need help so uh the way i like to put it when i'm asked this question and things that i've learned as i've incorporated this practice into my life is meditation is the act of focusing on your breath but it's really a cool technique because it's incredibly simple. It sounds hard because there's cultural things around it, um, images and, as well as um, philosophies, as well as like research and literature. There's so much around meditation, especially in this day and age, you know, which is kind of nice because we're in a, you know, an era of mass information which can also mean like a lot of headaches, a lot of confusion, a lot of overworking. So the fact that meditation though is like this big thing, has this big buzzword, has some benefits because it means that perhaps people need this. People are seeking a way in which to go within. So in short, meditation to me um, is the act of focusing your awareness on your breath. And really honoring. I love this word honor because meditation is an act and it's an act of honoring your breath, appreciating your breath and being aware that you are breathing. The end. <laughs> but that's not it or that's not all. There's also mindfulness. Now, mindfulness is another buzzword. And I like to say, um, well, actually, before I begin into what I like, what Google suggests that mindfulness is equally laughable. Not the definition, but in terms of what they reveal. Because what I've saw is that mindfulness is the quality or state of being mindful. It makes me think when I was like a child and I was in school, like primary school, and um, you know the teacher would say, you know, you don't answer a question with a question, or like when when you're defining things and you're learning definitions, it's like you you don't define a word with a word. So I'm just like, wait, what? How are you gonna? Who's gonna understand what that means, right? If they never heard of these terms, like mindfulness is the act of being mindful. Huh? What is mindful? Um, thankfully, it, it is how it sounds to degree. So what if I, I've understood as mindfulness is a little bit like twofold. So in this case, mindfulness can be a result of meditation. And a blanket definition, 
and um, understanding of mindfulness is it's the awareness of one's life. In all actuality, you know, like meditation, mindfulness is incredibly simple. It really means self-awareness because when you're mindful or you achieve a state of mindfulness, you become better aware of your well-being, um, be it emotionally or just simply physically. Like the more mindful you are, the more you can really achieve like somatic awareness, which is body awareness, and you're able to discern or um, discover, you know, how you feel. Like, how do you feel? How do you really feel, right? Because sometimes it's easy to kind of pretend a feeling or fake a feeling. You know, they say things like fake it till you make it. You know, for some of us, that may be like our entire lives. And no shade, I'm not judging because there's often um, safety precautions or safety attempts in that. Like um, you may have to fake it or felt like you had to fake it in order to be safe or feel safe or stay out of harm or may have not been safe to be unsafe or to say <laughs> you don't feel safe. Um, but with that though comes the result in not really knowing oneself, not really understanding one's emotions and one's reactions and one's body. And there's so many layers to it. So with mindfulness though, mindfulness is a really helpful um, and really nice um, it's an outcome, really, because it, it requires some effort. Some of us might be just like out the womb, mindful, where right? just like, wow, I'm aware. <laughs> and you'll hate me for this, but I kind of was like that as a child. But even still, it takes effort to be mindful or to acquire mindfulness, which is why it's separated or it can be separated from meditation but it's often put together because most people meditate to become more mindful, if that makes sense. The next thing that I wanna share is perhaps the most important because it's really like the source of many of these terms for most people, and that is Buddhism or uh, Buddhism. Really depends on how you pronounce it and where you are, who you are, and how you utilize words in speech. So Buddhism, what is that? Like, have you heard this before? Um, do you have any idea what this might mean? Perhaps, and if not, I am happy to share more. So Buddhism is actually a religion. So when I look on the web, which I've done, I believe it says, I didn't write down the verbatim or just like the word to word definition. I um, kind of paraphrase from that, but I believe it says that meditation is, oh, forgive me, that Buddhism is a widespread religion in Asia and um, specifically, I think, like India dating um, back to like the 5th century um, or before and it, the founder is Siddhartha Gautama you know that's what, what you will kind of see if you google it and it's true you know that one's a little bit more um, there's more weight to that one and I kind of understand the same that um, Buddhism is um, it's a lifestyle. It's really a, a practice, a cultural practice, uh, a religion. It really is a religion um, which follows the teaching of the historical Buddha, whose name was Siddhartha Gautama. And that's worth mentioning because, uh, again, context is very important because context encourages literacy. Um, and beyond literacy, like understanding and compassion and integrity. And as I share this practice with you, I figure why not stay in integrity 
and share from the source and what and when I say the source I mean um you know the the origins of for many where the practice of meditation become and something that I love to share for instance especially when I teach this and I've had the privilege to teach this to um young folks especially um young you know black and brown children um, in the Bronx you know and who, who were very hungry, you know, for this wisdom. And I was just like, what, y'all want me to share, you know? So it was very, very, very uh, humbling and just um, a big treat. But with that, something that I just love to make mention when talking about Buddhism and uh, especially highlighting Siddhartha, the historical Buddha, is that this was in fact, this is my favorite part, a brown man seeking liberation, or rather seeking right, to liberate his people from suffering. <laughs> Let me see. And the reason I bring that up is because, you know, it's it's a it's a a practice. Um and a tradition that is ancient, right? And that has been widespread, but also, um, you know, highly utilized and often for some, especially practitioners of this tradition who may feel that it's been kind of reduced in certain ways. Um, it's extra special to be able to bring um, just proper due diligence to what this tradition is, but really who the founder was and what he looked like, right? Because I know who I'm speaking to, right? Anyone can find this and anyone may, but the intention was to address a particular uh, demographic. And by that, I simply mean um, folks that probably are just um, young, you know, um, confused maybe, and um, who may occupy and have been born into cultures, traditions, realities really, that um, have been oppressed. Mm hmm that have been um, sort of taken for granted or that have been really indebted into some real deep suffering and um, like site-specific suffering, right? Because for the Buddha, his intention was to seek, especially the historical Buddha, to, to liberate, right? To free his people from suffering. But in, even in this, right? And, and as he reached certain levels of enlightenment, which is just... Um, Going back to that mindfulness word, which is like mindfulness, but in stages. So there's like levels to awareness, to self-awareness. And for most, it starts with just the body. And in that body, it's the makeup of the body. It's like, okay, what's, why does my body look this way? What's the color of my body? What's the context of my body? What's the um, stigma, if even, of my body? Who are responsible for this body? Who's next to this body? Right? There's, there's like these levels to awareness but then depending on who you are there's like ways in which you can go like the buddha way to the sky you know mentally speaking and for like um, people meaning like humanity so he reached a level of awareness where um it was about liberating humanity from suffering that's pretty heavy and as it should be, right? Because it's like, look around, everybody suffers. But I make mention and I highlight his brownness and his nativeness and his culture to those who may um, emblemize certain aspects of that culture to bring it back to earth, right? Because what I've learned in my experience as I came across this wisdom, and especially when I'm privileged, privileged, <laughs> 
to share this wisdom is that um, familiarity can really be a great source of um, not only comfort, but um, healing too. Because for me, it was incredibly healing to learn that a man, a brown man, created this teaching, created this practice. Because when I say this teaching is practice, I'm relating back to meditation because for many people, myself included, I learned of meditation through the Buddhist perspective. Because that's sort of kind of where it emerged from. Though, there are other examples of meditation, especially culturally sourced meditation and styles of meditation that aren't really related to Buddhism. And that goes back, really, kind of just to make a really nice circle to why I even wanted to share and distinguish these terms because they there's, as you can see already, a real deal connection between meditation, mindfulness, and Buddhism, but they are each inherently different. So you can be, you know, a Buddhist that meditates and grows in mindfulness, but you don't have to. You actually don't have to meditate in a formal manner to acquire mindfulness. And also, you don't have to be Buddhist. You know how I like to put it before I like kind of wrap all of this up? So meditation is like a vehicle <laughs> or a mode of transportation because it's a practice and it's mechanical or it can be like mechanical and like made into like a regimen and the destination would be mindfulness because in this vehicle you intend to arrive at a space within yourself that you are aware and in complete integrity of your of you how you feel how you think how you respond you know what you want there's so many fruits that can emerge from this practice that's why i get so excited <laughs> when i'm permitted to just share this resource because it is that it's a resource and it can help you know, um, I lied. Before I go, I'll say one last thing, especially as I talk about this and wrap this up. I arrived at this tradition, Buddhism, but, you know, meditation, like the, the practice of meditation in a time of crisis. I was young, I was an adolescent, I was a high school student, I was just insecure. I was anxious, I was unrealistic, I was um, depressed, I was um, burnt out. I was everything that you don't want to be, but you might be when you're that age. When you're um, 16, 17. I might even be like 15 too, because I've always been a little young, but not here, not there. And um, yeah, and it just felt like the world was falling apart. And then I had no way out. I couldn't fake the funk. I couldn't fake it. I couldn't, um, I did, but somehow it didn't work anymore. So I needed to be real. I needed integrity. I needed honesty. I needed some wisdom. So when I was sharing this practice, I actually got to read the story of the Buddha, of the historical Buddha. You might see if you, you know, if you jump into this further, and by this I mean like meditation, which Maybe like the rabbit hole into Buddhism, but this in by no way is like the uh, uh, how can I say the intention? It's like I'm just sharing, you know, how to use your breath in a particular way. But if you do find yourself diving into that way, you know, you may see the term Shaka. Um, I think it's Shaka Yamuni. Shaka. Uh, I won't even say it. it's a a Pali word, which Pali is the language of the historical Buddha. Um, which just li literally means historical. Uh, but if you, uh, yeah, I was 
in short, I read his story, I found a mirror, and it changed my world because I was able to relate. That's why, again, I like to reference who he was and what he was and his intention because it can be referential. It can perpetuate a mirror for many other, you know, brown people, black people, you know, just people of color who perhaps find themselves in a bit of a discord, an inner discord, and they have outer um, implications or outer origins. Mm. Yeah. There's a way out, <laughs> apparently. And in this case, the way out is in. <laughs> so if you, um, you know, you're still here and still engaged in this, then I'd like to take you on a journey, a journey inward. And I like to use the breath and the act of meditation to grow in mindfulness. If you so dare, <laughs> and if you find yourself just um, inspired. So yeah, let's jump in. Okay, so now is the long-awaited <laughs> time to sit or stand or lie or walk whichever I guess um, posture you find yourself in utmost comfort and just like ease I would suggest as we jump into the practice and I want us to, before we even begin begin to just take a few deep breaths because I've learned it's helpful to just like ground real time if you don't have time to probably do what we're about to do, just deep breaths in general can be really, really helpful. And coming back to earth. So uh, yeah, let's do like um, four deep breaths. So inhaling through our nostrils and exhaling through our mouth. And what I like to do is on the exhale, just release any sound that comes up. So I'll show you. Whew. Let's do that a few more times. I need it, so hopefully you may need it too. very excited to just be able to share what I've learned you know and also to um, you know be a helping hand as well as to, to just do this myself um, what I've learned from picking up this practice and it in fact what led me to continue was that um, community Meditation can foster community, depending on what you seek, where you're at, and what you want. But um, I knew then, like I know now, um, community healing is incredibly powerful. And it's a great like uh, strategy to stay motivated. So oftentimes when I'm encouraged, like now even, to teach or to share, um, it's actually for myself. Like it, it's, um, it's like a double benefit because I'm able to grow and uh, maintain my integrity and uh, yeah so thank you thank you for this opportunity to just be able to um, show up in this way and in my own comfort you know like in my own way of and style of showing up
so yeah i hope you're comfortable hope that little small talk <laughs> was enough time to get you in a space of comfort because i am very comfortable I'm, like sit on a little cushion i got my scarf like i'm wearing a hoodie but just in case i want to like i don't know just shrink a bit <laughs> as we begin um so i'm cozy and the goal for this practice at least in this moment is to, to be cozy or get cozier with yourself <sighs> yeah so um if you want to sit more formally what i can suggest is what i've seen in the past um again this is when you're de delving into the more buddhist like the buddhist practices of these this exercise and this part like this literal practice because even this what i'm going to share you is from a buddhist tradition um but if you want to sit with more like um formality it's best to kind of like sit like shoulder length position like your feet are shoulder um i forget what they say like spread like shoulder length apart and your back is straightened and i remember doing like kind of like pretending there's like a thread holding your um head you just want to like Lift, lightly lift your chin up while you're looking down because for some people what I've learned is that um, some can just like jump straight in and like close their eyes whereas others um, that it may not be that easy so it may be more suitable to just like look at something like direct your gaze so I'll suggest this you know you direct your gaze in a fixated point so either down I've learned it's a little bit better to just like look down and look either at your feet at the floor or something in front of you or um, to just close your eyes. That way you can just limit the um, distractions. Cause that's the thing, distractions will occur. Again, as I mentioned earlier, even myself, you know, there's a lot of noise outside, but that's life. I can't tell everyone in the neighborhood, like be quiet, right? Cause I'm recording, it's, it's not realistic. And it's also inconsiderate. Um, so yeah. Such is life. Noise will happen. You may be distracted. But the goal is to come back to self. Get back in center, if possible. And hopefully, that's what this can share, like, unfold. So yeah, uh, so sit upright, you know. The goal of even just the, the posture is to be, like, in an aligned position energetically speaking but you know if you're just starting out and you may not um have this sort of physique which promotes that level of alignment and your alignment might be better when you're lying by all means that's why i actually like to lie and meditate or lay and meditate because um it's just more comfortable and it, it um kind of grounds me a little bit more by having me on the floor um you can stand or you can just sit so for me i'm gonna you might see me cross my legs you might um yeah i'm just gonna sit it's, it's gonna be a little bit not so formal this time around because it's just a it's like uh we're, we're tasting it you know especially if you have never tasted this before i don't want to over you know any day and just overwhelm you with so much let me give you a nice little sample so, with that said, what I'm going to share is actually one of my favorite meditative practices, and it's um, sourced in Buddhism, um, particularly from uh, the pa uh, um, I believe it's Theravada, and I could be saying this incorrectly, so forgive me. I'm not like looking anywhere and sourcing um but uh it's a particular sect within buddhism that again utilizes the language of the original or the historical buddha and um i was taught this before and when i was taught this <laughs> it like changed my life and i began just like sharing it with everyone but that's because it's really powerful so with this it's called metta metta meditation um or i think another word like the the real word, like the real Pali word, is like Maitri. I'm not that good with the pronunciation, so I'm just gonna say Metta, which is a Pali word for um, benevolence, 
unconditional love and kindness. This is often understood as love and kindness meditation, which is very popular. And it's one of those things where it's popular for a reason. Because I remember growing up and even you know, having a bit of a personality that doesn't like things that are popular. This is popular for a good reason. So yeah, metta, love and kindness. Why? Because everybody can use it. Boom. Just gonna keep it that simple. So, as we begin this practice, I want you to be comfortable. I want you to be a little bit more grounded. I hope those breathing techniques we did before brought you into the space wherever you are, you know, whether you're outside, inside, next to folks, alone, wherever. Just hope you're more grounded. It might be best to close your eyes, but if that's a stretch, then just don't look at me. Direct your gaze downward or at a fixated position that can kind of keep you in check. And yeah, let's begin. So what I'm going to do, we're going to sit for a few minutes and when we're done, so here's what we're going to do. To begin, I'm going to hit my um, bell, my sound bell, or singing bell rather. And then to end, I'll do the same. And I'll do it three times because three is a fun number and um, it will be nice to know like, okay, on the third bell, it's time to come back. It's going to be wise to do what we sort of just did and have some, uh, just some deep breaths to take us a little bit further into both ourselves and our environment. So inhaling through our nose and exhaling through our mouths. Let's do three deep breaths and really kind of like hit it home with this one. Now if you're sitting, I want you to make sure your feet are firmly pressed on the floor beneath you. And if you're lying, I want you to just notice the area where your back, you know, your legs, just wherever your body embraces the ground. And I want you to do that by just focusing your awareness. So this can be, again, if you're sitting, this can be like where you're, uh, the soles of your feet meet the ground beneath you. Or this can be like if you, like where your back you know, embraces your chair or your bed or the ground, just wherever there's contact between your body and um, the ground, the earth beneath you. And as you bring your awareness 
in this location or in areas. I just want you to notice. That's really all we're doing today. And in this practice, it's just noticing. I want you to notice how you feel, but also what you feel. Is there warmth in this area? Is there coolness? Just pay attention to any sensation that arises from the focus on your body and whatever you know on your body or like where your body rather is in contact with the ground, earth, or surface beneath you. Before we move forward, I just want to give thanks, especially if you're embracing the ground like myself. And I want you to just develop, if you can, some gratitude for the earth beneath you, the bed beneath you, the chair, whatever you're on beneath you. Because in this moment, like so many other moments. Gravity is working and to your benefit. So that means that the ground beneath you is in fact supporting you and is in fact keeping you and in a way lifting you up because you have not fallen through this ground or whatever surface you're on but you've managed to maintain balance so for that reason I just would like to suggest you uh, give thanks give thanks to the earth for supporting you, for having a really neat phenomenon such as gravity, which also supports you, and then for your body, which is the vessel of sorts that's receiving, perceiving, and all of it. So now that we're just a little bit more aware of our body, I want to bring our awareness to us. And you may notice, for instance, yourself, uh, you know, you may feel a little distracted or you may hear noises, especially on my end. Forgive me. Though it's not my fault. <laughs> it's just the environment. But this actually may work to your benefit because you may find yourself following the rabbit hole of the sounds around you. And that might be helpful. Or you may wanna come back and follow my voice and wherever rabbit hole that goes. So I want you now to think of yourself. Mm -hmm. You. this being that is somehow still here, right? That is uh, alive and breathing. Albeit sensitive, maybe even tough. Nonetheless, you're here. So it's important to be aware who in fact and what in fact you are. So as you think of yourself, I'm gonna suggest two things. You may wanna think of you as a child, because it may be easier to picture yourself in a more um, 
gentler space. Like it's easier to be gentle with yourself when you are thinking of you as a baby or as a little person. Or conversely, you may want to think of yourself as a very, as an elder, as an older person. Maybe like you got a cane and you got some wrinkles and some white hair. And I, the reason I suggest this is because in this practice, again, metta means um, loving kindness. It's metta. It's a uh, forgive me. It's um, it's benevolence. Benevolence. It's peace. And it's really unconditional love, which can be hard to um, share for oneself in the current state. So if you think of baby you, by all means, think of, you know, elder you also, even if you think of you how you are right now, great. The goal is just to bring you up in your mind's eye. And picture yourself in front of you. So you can even think of looking in a mirror. And, um, hmm. Hmm. What do you see? Who do you see? But as you see yourself, I would suggest you see with uh, the eyes of love. The eyes of mercy. Because you need it. You deserve it. And in fact, as you look at yourself in any state you choose, I want you to think. And actually share, but mentally, to yourself. I'm going to say some affirmations, and I just would encourage you to repeat them. You know, in your head and in, and in your heart, but to yourself. So it's like, you know, think as if you're speaking to yourself right now. So again, you're looking, looking at you, see you. What can also be helpful, imagine looking at yourself from, um, you know, the eyes of somebody that loves you. So this can be like a parent or um, a friend, a pet, Whomever in your life you know loves you, put yourself in your position and look at yourself the same way. And say to yourself these following phrases. May I be happy? May I be healthy? May I be safe? May I live my life in ease? Just sit with that. You know, it can also be helpful as you were hearing these, because I think I'm going to say it again. And, um, again, since you're speaking to yourself, it may be a little bit helpful if, I, if you change that I to you, right? Because again, it could be hard. We all don't have the same origin story, right? So that process of acquiring and achieving self-love is not going to be one size fit all. And saying I might be hard. So it may be simpler or more um, proper and suitable 
for you to say you because you are speaking to yourself so you could like you know like you are smart you are so let's do it just i'm gonna say it one more time like as i say this i really want you to mean it and as you mean it be just open and gentle and allow yourself to feel whatever you feel You know, let's do that. Before we get, let's just do another like three deep breaths because I could, it's heavy. I'm gonna let it out. healthy? May I be safe? May I live my life? And ease. So I want you to just just sit with that. Just allow yourself to feel all of that. Yeah, just just sit just feel what you need to feel and as you're feeling i would encourage you not to judge yourself don't judge don't judge you nor how you respond just let it all out and again pay attention to how your body feels and this is another proper time so, you know, let's go back to the beginning. And now let's go back to our feet or, you know, whatever area in our body is in contact with the ground or the surface beneath us. And I'm bringing you back here because, again, I just want to emphasize that gravity is working. <laughs> You are supported. Here's the thing. You are supported so much that even nature, nature is jumping in to keep you level, to ensure that you don't fall. Or if you do fall, right? There's this surface that can kind of catch you. It's pretty powerful. And in this moment, as you just gifted yourself, so metta, which I just love. It's such a cool word to say, metta. You gotta like, but you can't see me, hopefully. Hmm. In the act of that, you are still supported, like a little baby. And the earth is merely the hand beneath you, holding you up. So, just before we end, because I'm going to ring my bell soon and do the thing to bring you back out. <coughs> just want you to honor and maybe even put your hand over your chest. And keep repeating these affirmations as long as you need to you know like may i be happy may i be safe may i be healthy may i be at peace Whew. 
before we go, because this exercise, it's it's pretty deep and it can it's it's to extend love in all four directions, like to you know starting with self and going out, but to stay privy of time, I think just the last thing we'll do. And think of everyone. Imagine yourself just soaring in the sky. You know, like drone perspective. And think of all beings in this earth. Oh. Let's share some method. Let's just say make all beings be happy. All beings healthy. May all beings be safe. May all beings live their lives ease. Because that is something everyone deserves. Especially you. So just take your last couple breaths and really it's a treat. That's why I love this exercise, because it's, it's a, a real deal treat. So just take what you can from it and um, soak it up. It's gonna ring this bell soon. I just want you to just savor. Bring yourself back into the space. You know, maybe wiggle your feet, your fingers. Gently open your eyes. Come back to Earth. Welcome back. Good morning. <laughs> Sometimes I would do that when I lead a meditation. I like to say, good morning. How you doing? <laughs> welcome and I am um, you're welcome but also thank you for just giving me an opportunity to share and really bring you back to you that's it bring you back home within and um, I hope that was helpful I hope you learned something and more importantly I hope you gained something Whatever that is, I hope you benefit it. And we've meditated now. That was a little over 10 minutes, kind of in between 10 and 15. So it's a cool accomplishment, especially if you're a beginner. That means you survived, child. You made it through. <laughs> and I'm proud of you. I'm very, very proud of you. You decided to stand up for yourself and give you what you needed. That's, that's beautiful. So that's all I have. You know, I'm very thankful that you let me um, sort of share who I am, what I do, or what I can share, and uh, just bring you back to you. Because that's it. And there's more to it. And um, I'm excited. I, I look forward to watching you or not but just um encouraging you in your growth your health because you deserve it you deserve your breath you deserve your rest you deserve your health and if there's any last thing i can say there is nothing minor about you you are in fact an incredible gift to this world and it's upon you to take care of you and with honor. So thank you. That's it. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing with this, but um, yeah. Um, good luck out there. I know it's a little bit scary, but 
I'm sure now you may um, get better.